So the weekly patch for Outriders has been delayed yet again, but instead PCF are dropping a few weapon buffs on the game today. And today guys, we get into all the latest. How's it going people? My name is DP Journey. If you enjoyed the video, leaving a like really helps out. And if you like what you see and want to see more, be sure to subscribe. So the patch that was supposed to come last week, people thought was coming this week, has been delayed again. But instead, PCF are dropping weapon buffs here today and today guys we get into the latest okay so they dropped a post not long ago and it states our upcoming patch is unfortunately still not ready for release however we have managed to bring uh, forward and release a small number of buffs that were planned to be implemented later on as part of a wider rebalance we have been able to make these changes today because they involve on back-end balancing rather than changes to game code the below buffs have been implemented as part of today's maintenance event. No download is necessary for them to take effect. Okay, so weapon mods buffed. Winter Blasters has area of effect range increased to 5 meters. It was previously 4 meters. Ultimate Anomaly Surge has had its damage increased by 137% from base 25 to a 34.25. Claymore Turret has had its explosion damage increased by 210% from base of a 30.6 to a 64.26. Ultimate Storm Whip has had its damage increased by 140% from base of a 23 to a 32.2. Wow, that's craziness. Strings of Gauze has had its damage increased by 262% from base of 24.5 to a 64. So quite some decent weapon buffs there, I'm not going to lie. They go on to state topic for discussion the weapon mod meta. You may notice that a few of the above mods fall within a very particular category of mods. Most of them are single target or cleave mods, meaning that their damage potential is limited to a single enemy or a small group of linked enemies. For the purpose of this discussion, we refer to these mods as ST mods. This contrasts with uncapped area of effect mods, such as Morning Winds, which deals damage to an unlimited number of enemies within their respective area of effect radius. The current mod meta in Outriders currently centers around three pillars. A. General area of effect damage mods. B. Morning Wind and the Quick Cycling meta. And C. Fortress. Today's buffs are only our first steps towards addressing those aspects of the above mod meta which we deem to be unhealthy for the development of fun and varied builds in Outriders. We will be making changes in the future that will be aimed at disrupting the meta but doing so in a way that opens up many more fun options and alternatives for players. Below is an overview of how we see the current situation. Pillar A, general area of effect damage mods. According to our player data and community observations, there is currently an over-reliance on area of effect damage mods, which is most likely the result of the way most enemy encounters in expeditions are structured. Players usually face hordes of enemies against whom such area of effect mods are the most efficient method of playing. One versus one or smaller mob group encounters are rare enough for the area of effect mods to still do enough DPS to overcome these encounters, even though ST mods would likely be more effective here. This means that there is a strong under-reliance on ST mods, which is further exacerbated by some of these ST mods generally underperforming. Storm Whip is an excellent example here, as its previous damage potential stronger underperformed, meaning few players chose this mod over other better alternatives. While originally developing the OG Outriders mod experience, we had envisioned that players would ensure that both of their weapons have fundamentally different mods. These would allow them to deal with and tackle different scenarios and encounters using a variety of weapons and methods. This brings us to the next two pillars B and C. We believe and think that you'll agree that the current meta that involves B and C has fundamentally stifled the need to run anything else. There is a little incentive to experiment with other mods when these will always be more powerful. Pillar B, Morning Winds and the Quick Cycling meta. Morning Winds is one of the most dominant active mods currently in use. For anyone unaware, one of the most potent mod setups in the game right now is to stack the Morning Winds mod on multiple weapons and empty your magazines, then run into a clump of enemies and cycle through your weapons, triggering this on reload mod and its substantial damage multiple times in a very short space of time. Some players are able to trigger Morning Winds three times in the space of a two second window. This combo is especially effective in single player, where enemies cluster around a single rather than two or three players. 
Note, the above is oversimplified, but the intent is to mainly explain the concept. Morning Winds is therefore vastly outperforming its intended potential, making it one of the best active damage mods in the game, while inviting a rather unorthodox playstyle. A single Morning Winds mod by itself isn't necessarily a huge problem. It is mainly the double and triple stacking of it which is causing an unnatural shift in expected playstyles. Overall, Morning Winds is a big topic and deserves its own discussion thread, which we will open in future, along with historical context about how Morning Winds came to be. Pillar C, Fortress. The third and by far most problematic pillar is C, the Fortress mod. The way Fortress currently works, usually provides a passive and consistent 43% damage increase to damage the player inflicts. In essence, take your normal damage and apply the calculation of times 1.43 to it. That's it. That's the mod. No gameplay loop, kill or damage event or special situation required. In the current DPS oriented endgame, all players will naturally be trying to maximise the damage they are able to output. So the existence of Fortress in its current uh, form essentially blocks a mod slot. By not combining Fortress with your chosen primary mod, you may well be sacrificing DPS, which is a philosophical question we're not comfortable with you needing to face. We want you to have a free choice of multiple different combinations without feeling that you're missing out because you didn't choose Fortress. We also continue to be very aware that a timer-based endgame is part of the problem in that it forces a DPS-oriented build, rather than a survival or just pure fun build. These are current challenges that we believe the Outriders mod meta is facing today. Today's buffs are only the first steps in remedying the situation and we are starting with a partial look at Pillar A. We'll discuss Pillar B and C and the best possible ways to tackle them in the future. So there we have it guys on the mods and the buffs to them. Now everything they've said here in regards to Fortress and Morning Winds is 100% correct. I mean there's no point now in even doing an expedition and trying to lay down that DPS if you don't have Fortress at least because it's just that good of a mod. How are they going to tackle this? I ain't got a clue. But I do like the idea of them looking into the time-based expeditions and working a way around that. It's something we've wanted for quite a while. I mean, I myself, I use my trickster build, my tickle tickle build. I don't really use weapons, but still, even their fortress helps me out. So yeah, it's going to be interesting to see how they combat that. Okay, so we're going to move on to patch news. Our latest patch is currently undergoing uh, the usual test cycle, but we wanted to share some insights on the upcoming fixes and changes with you already today. Please do bear in mind that our current testing is still validating the below fixes so some of them may not be 100% guaranteed for this patch. Also know that this is not an exhaustive list and is still subject to change as we pass through the testing phase. The final patch will include more fixes and improvements. Further improve the visibility of the Broodmother's Surge Air of Effect skill limits. Fixed a bug that was preventing players from reviving themselves and other players after using the Trickster's Borrowed Time skill. Resolved an issue that could cause the game to stutter when engaging crawlers in the battle during expeditions. Resolved an issue that could cause players to stutter when entering the Drain Lake during the third enemy encounter in the Scorched Lands expedition. Resolved an issue that prevented secondary characters from picking up journal entries if they had already been collected on a different character. Resolved an issue that would force uh, matchmaking privacy settings to default to open. The privacy setting should now remain closed when set. This should help further reduce AFK matchmaking. Added an AFK status for players on friends lists. Changed the behaviour of the devastators in Pale so that the game will detect impaled enemies as dead even before they disappear. The devastators reflect bullet skill will now protect uh, from scaring projectile attacks. Fixed a bug that could prevent Devastators from being able to consistently dodge if they had the auto reflect mod on. Fixed a bug that could cause client shots to sometimes deal no actual damage to enemies. Fixed a bug that could cause the Technomancer's Plague Sour set bonus to not proc consistently. Fixed a bug that could cause uh, the Plague Sour and the Cannibal Legendary sets to not retain their set bonus after transition. Fixed a bug that could cause certain mods like Grand Opening to not proc if the player was on their last magazine crash fixes and other minor bug fixes so yes guys expect those and probably a few other things in the next patch now when we'll get that patch i have no idea but i'm hoping now next week 
yes guys, today we have the mod changes that I mentioned earlier, and do let me know how they feel to you. But there we have it guys with the latest news surrounding Outriders. If you guys enjoyed the video, leaving a like really helps out. If you're new around here and want to see more, be sure to subscribe. And if you never want to miss a video or upload, you can turn notifications on by hitting that bell button. But guys, thanks as always for stopping by and hopefully I will see you on that next one.